another edition of the Romania Show. Yes, that is the show that you are watching. If this is your first time, welcome aboard. I do want to start off as I have been seemingly every day this past uh, few episodes, but for all of you who've been sending me these really positive and encouraging and wonderful messages, thank you very, very much. Uh, I don't say any names unless you specifically ask me to, so I'm not going to say any names, but been cool to hear that both Romanians and non-Romanians who are interested in Romania have been really watching the show and enjoying it. We've only been on the air, on the air, on the internet air, as we say, of a couple of weeks, and we're trucking along. Speaking of which, let's talk about a little show news. Uh, on Friday, this Friday, as in three days from now, I, uh, the show, aka me, uh, I'm getting paid, so I have a couple of cameras picked out, video cameras, and I will make my selection on Friday. Probably have to be something I'll order, and it'll come uh, delivered, so it won't get here on Friday. I won't pick it up at the mall, but I wanted to buy a brand new video camera for several reasons. Not the camera that's looking at me right now. That camera's fine. Uh, me sitting here at this desk and you guys looking at me is fine, but it's got to be a little bit more than just good old me, because even though I'm awesome and I'm perfect and I'm wonderful, uh, everyone likes to see a fresh face. I've already spoken to some people. They are very interested in helping me out and doing some cool segments and things outside of this uh, me sitting in front of the desk thing. And the camera is going to be part of that because they're going to go out on the streets and out in public and record some cool stuff. We'll call them uh, correspondence, if you will, and we'll start running those segments here on the show so it won't be just me. So, yay, that's going to be cool. And, yep, oh, oh, appreciate, oh, thank you, and uh, it's a beautiful day here in Romania today. Uh, kids, you having fun? Yeah. All right, good, of course, Timmy, yeah, he's here helping me out with the sound today. Uh, once the budget gets uh, handled for the camera, the next step after that is a proper sound mixer, so we can have some real microphones uh, here at the studio, at the studio and it'll sound a lot, whole lot better. And I will be happier because then I won't have to listen to this uh, crazy echo in my uh, ears anymore. But anyway, let's get on to the meat of the show. Uh, I saw uh, a very interesting article, it's in Romanian, but it was advice to people who are, I guess, starting a blog. This is sort of a blog, it's just a video blog, right? It's not truly a television show because it's not broadcast uh, on your television, although uh, if you're like me and you got Xbox, you can watch YouTube on your TV and there's various other ways to do it. You can certainly download the files and put them on there if you really like. They're not, uh, most of them are in high definition. Not yet! But uh, whatever the way it is, uh, they're saying, you know, rule number 12, I think it was, no politics. The only Chinese, this is the, what they said, only Chinese people care about politics or should be involved in politics. Now, I know the truth. The truth is that for most people, whether Romanian or otherwise, politics is pretty boring. Uh, this show is slightly based on both Inguro Presse as well as The Daily Show, or the American show. And both of those shows involve a little bit of politics. That's the nature of the beast here. Uh, I realize a lot of people find it boring and they want to hear about celebrities and so-and-so got married to so-and-so, so-and-so got divorced to so-and-so. Hey, that's fine. You know, I, I have a, someone I grew up with. She is a star on uh, E! Entertainment at the moment. And a lot of people like that channel and want to see fashion and dresses and I don't know what else. Well, good for you and good for them. That's your kind of cup of tea. Cool, go for it. And this is not going to be what's going to happen here on the Romanian show. Doesn't mean we're only going to do politics, but politics are important. And, you know, the, the, the laws that get passed and whether a street gets paved or built, or uh, whether, um, oh goodness, I can't even think anymore. Uh, everything that happens uh, starts with politics. So, politics is kind of important, and it's slightly covered in the Romanian press. And if you speak Romanian, obviously, as I mentioned on the earlier show, there are several other sources. This is the one place that exists for discussions about what's happening in Romania, and that does include politics. So. Just want to let you know that is something that was going to continue. If you find that boring, well, uh, that over there, goodbye. Uh, as uh, you can see, somewhere over here, if I can point my finger at the right spot, there's uh, the hashtag for Twitter, if that's your kind of thing. Uh, the Romania Show, Now I'll turn Twitter on here so you can see 
all the tweets as they pop up. These are live, so if you're watching this uh, during the live broadcast, you can certainly send a tweet if you're watching this on YouTube or the replay on the Ustream uh, channel. Go ahead and send me a tweet. It'll pop up because as you can see, some of these are a little bit old or they've been repeated. And the little program will keep running until we get to the newest one. And as the show goes on, uh, you'll continue to see them. So what else is going on today? Well, besides politics, let's, hey, I mentioned politics. Let's go right to the politics. Uh, I noticed that the parliament today passed a uh, legislation that says that Victor Ponta, the red team prime minister, is going to be the official representative of Romania at the June 28th uh, European Council meeting. Now this is something I talked about before because it's a big whoop de whoop here in Romania because ordinarily, or in the past, uh, the prime minister I mean, excuse me, the president has been the one who's gone to the meeting and represented Romania, and Ponta, being an opposition politician to the president, wanted to go himself. So first he said, I'm going to go, and then other people say, well, no, you can't go, and he said, well, by golly, I'm going to go. So he got his buddies in the parliament who are currently running the show. Uh, I think there was a very few opposition uh, politicians who actually participated in the vote today. And he passed himself a little law, says he's going to go. Does that mean he's going to go? Well, this is Romania. So, for sure, there's going to be a, a court a challenge, and it's going to go in front of, I don't know who, which exactly uh, legislates on that, but the constitutional court. And then they're going to decide. And no matter what happens, you know, Ponta's either going to be like, yeah, I'm the king of the universe, or, oh, it's not fair. Those, those greedy people took away my right to represent Romania. Now, Outside of Romania, does anybody care? Uh, the answer is no, because this is going to be a meeting dominated by France and Germany and primarily be devoted to the monetary crisis and issue that's going on. And Romania it might as well be the smallest player on the stage there. Uh, they're going to sit there, they're going to take some photographs, and they'll drink a glass of water and listen in the headphones uh, as the conversation is being translated. And that's all they're going to do. So nobody really cares. Except for Ponta, who's, you know, what is he, 40? He's like, he's about 12, and he's saying, I'm ready to go to the meeting. I'm the boss of me. Well, no, you're not. Okay? You know, maybe in the fall, when there's uh, national elections for the parliament, and maybe if his buddies win, and they once again decide that he needs to be the prime minister, and he's once again confirmed in the post, then maybe he's the prime minister, the real leader of this country. Well... Till then, you know, go cry, go cry in your little Formula One car, you know. Well, as you can see by the Twitter here that's showing up, and it's also on my uh, top stories of the day. Uh, one of my old, I guess I hate to say enemies, it sounds a little strong, but one of my old adversaries, uh, Elena Udra, who is the vice president of the Orange Team on the national level. She was the president of the Bucharest chapter of the Orange Team, also known as PDL or Pedele in Romanian. She quit yesterday, uh, surprising apparently everyone else in the Orange Team, surprised in the fact that she didn't tell anybody ahead of time. Now, why did she quit? Well, Bucharest has, uh, during this past local election, they have one uh, super mayor, I guess the mayor of the whole city, and there are six uh, smaller sub-mayors who are each in charge of a certain sector of Bucharest. And none of the Orange Team candidates won. None of them, actually only one of them came even close and was expected to win. The other ones got trounced. I think uh, Sofina Barbu, I'm not going to get into who she is, but she I think, got like 8% of the vote, basically. One in 12, and she got trounced. Uh, Poor old Silvio Priguana, who, like I said before, he's the kind of guy that I wish he lived down the street from me. I'd go buy the guy a beer, could cheer him up, because he looks like he needs one. But he trounced, you know, and the red team, including the crazy red team guy in Sector 3, uh -huh, we're the winners, what are you going to do about it? So, Elena Udria, uh -huh, see you later, I, I, I follow my sword. Well, politically, okay, she did the right thing. Why has she been my adversary? Well, for a long time, up until uh, January of this year, she was the, the quote-unquote tourism minister of this country. She really did hold the post, and the name of the ministry is actually Tourism and Regional Development. Well, 
tourism means bringing foreigners into the country as well as encouraging uh, domestic travel for the purposes of recreation or holiday making or vacationing as you like to call it and regional development is things like building roads and schools and you know running water and villages and things it's not exactly the two things don't really go together except of course in Romania which means that because I've talked to people before and tourism is you know vaguely my thing I wrote a book a lot of people like it and it's designed for tourists in the sense that, you know, you're not a Romanian born and bred here. It's also designed for people who are living here and moving here. But, you know, tourism and building, running water in villages are not necessarily compatible. And every time I talk to Romanians, including the crazy uh, tourism director of, for Cluj, about, you know, what does tourism mean? They always think the same thing. They always go... Uh, bigger hotels, bigger conference centers, and, you know, some spectacular construction project, like an amusement park, or fun park, as they call it in uh, British English. You know, they don't understand that, you know, I know people who pay good money to go stay in a, a jungle and live with natives and learn how to make spears and stuff, because tourism means something different than what you have at home. Romanians think that they want to make home look like all these places that, that they used to go visit or they want to go visit. So they go, whoa, what do they have in Germany? Well, let's build everything exactly the same as Germany or, or America or London or France. France got an Arc de Triomphe, we'll build an Arc de Triomphe. Uh, Dubai's got a five star hotel, we'll build a five star hotel. Blah, 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 blah. No. Very few people are coming to Romania because they want luxury, modern conveniences. The, the world is full of places, much better well known, uh, much easier to get to, actually cheaper to get to, and um, that are very luxurious, and those are wonderful places. Dubai probably being the most famous, so where Mr. Ponte goes on a regular basis. Romania is prime tourist attraction at the moment. Uh, it's Dracula, number one. Okay, that's not going to change. And it's fine for what it is, but it's the... The, the natural part of Romania, the, the unspoiled, the undeveloped, the rural, the, the ancient handicrafts and the people who still can build things with their hands and musicians and shepherds in the field playing the little pipe and the, the, you know, the sheep going across. Hey, hey, Timmy, did you hear that? I'm, all right, see, there you go. See, people like Romania for that reason. Of course they like, uh, you know, I guess five-star hotels and I'm not, but a lot of people that I know. I know these things. So, Elena Udria, in her capacity as tourism minister, I, I did it, tourism minister, I did everything possible to contact this woman. I contacted, uh, they have an outreach office in London. Contacted them, blah, blah, blah. They got back to me, but nothing happened. Contacted the outreach office they have in North America, which means the United States and Canada. Oh, hey, sounds good, blah, blah, blah. Nothing happened. Try to contact uh, the office here in, Buc uh, in Bucharest, the main office, when Udria was uh, tourism. Blah, 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 nothing happened. What was her big project? She built a bridge to snag off, which might bring, I don't know, a few hundred extra tourists to snag off who want to go see where Dracula's buried, you know, whoop de whoop. So she lost her job in January as the tourism minister. To be honest with you, I couldn't even tell you who the current tourism minister is and who knows how long he's going to last so why bother and she started focusing on being you know the orange team heavy see a lot of people like Udria because she's blonde uh, she gave a few interviews to the foreign press and they were like oh she's so hot blah, blah. I mean I actually had guys write to me and they say oh I don't care what, what kind of woman she is she's hot man she's a hot chick well, you know, if that's how you determine your vacationing or holiday, because, you know, theoretically out there, a hot woman is encouraging you to come. Well, you know, okay, I understand, but, I mean, she did a couple photo shoots for some magazines, and, you know, if you, if you Google it, you can find it, and you can also find the unphotoshopped version, which kind of shows how she really looks. But I don't really care how she looks. My concern is not... Is she a beauty queen? Is that is she doing the right thing for Romania? Is she promoting the right kind of tourism, the, the kind of tourism that will keep Romania both making money, 
as well as not being another uh, concrete asphalt strip mall, uh, McDonald's, uh, Radisson, uh, Marriott, Hilton kind of country. Nobody wants to come here for that. Well, that's, that's just another reason to keep driving until you get to Ukraine or Bulgaria, which is where apparently a million Romanian tourists have already gone to this year because the prices are much lower and everything's much better down there. This is Bulgaria, okay? We're not talking uh, Switzerland or a very wealthy country. So anyway, that's what's going on with that. Speaking of legislation, remember I mentioned Ponta and the, you know, going to the council, I noticed that Basescu, the president, signed the Big Brother law into effect today, which means it's now everybody's watching you, man. They're watching me right now. Now, the Big Brother law is a little bit kind of curious because, you know, Romania, I swear, is protected by its own incompetence and quite often uh, inability to do what other countries do much more effectively. Sometimes being incompetent is good when you're doing the wrong thing. Uh, four years ago, Romania passed a law, very similar. They call it the Big Brother Law. What it really means is that the people providing the internet service to the regular people, just like I have internet here in Romania, this is how you're watching the show, they were keeping records on you know websites you visited, emails you got, traffic, the traffic that you were using. And the theory behind that is that under legal and established procedures. If you're breaking the law, you're some kind of hacker or doing I don't know what, the police can go to uh, the internet provider, say, hey, we know so-and-so from ISP, blah, 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 IP, whatever is doing this. Who is the guy? Can we get the records? And they go, well, we got them right here. So they passed that law four years ago, then the courts overturned it because they said it was a violation of privacy. Hey, hey, man, you know, that's what I'm saying. Whew, I know. And then, this year, they passed the new version of the Big Brother law, and today, Basesco sent it into effect, which means it's now working right now. Now, what is that about? Well, it turns out that the European Union, you know, the all-wise and knowing European Union said, uh, fellas, it's actually a requirement to be in the European Union that internet providers record some information. I think it's 60 days. I, the specifics are online. You can find them. I looked into it a little bit because uh, one of the guys who voted against it is uh, kind of a crazy guy in the red team. You know, I like that guy because he's always about the conspiracy theory. So, hey, sometimes conspiracy theories are correct. It gets a little off his rocker, but, you know, it, he's the kind of guy who brings these obscure things up. And he's like, all right, so in that bill, you can go to hell. But the European Union said, hey, if you don't pass this bill, we're going to start fining you. I believe it was something like 10,000 euros a day or some ridiculous thing. So they passed the law, and now for the first time, or now once again, I should say, but uh, the Internet people are recording you. It's just going to be a little bit interesting because, uh, you know, people say, oh, hackers, hackers. Well, very, 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 very little hacking actually ends up doing anybody any malicious harm, like stealing your credit cards or whatever. Okay, occasionally, yeah, occasionally the lightning comes out of the sky and cracks you in the skull. It's terrible. It's no fun. I had a relative get like, killed by lightning. I'm not going to say, you know, you'd be good for lightning, but, you know, most hackers are just having fun or, quite frankly, they're, you know, bringing down these uh, corporate giants who control our internet. So, I'm a little curious, though, about, we'll call it pirating, pirar, because uh, Romanians don't have a habit of paying for television or movies. You know, television shows, especially from America or Canada or, you know, the English ones, uh, that don't get shown on Romanian TV until six months or a year after they're shown in, you know, America or whatever, because... You know, you just can't. I mean, I, a couple years ago, a friend of mine had a birthday, and I thought it'd be a nice gift to buy her a, a movie on DVD, you know, a proper, you know, wrapped up and, you know, got the case and everything. Not a pirate one, a regular one. And I, you know, it took me a long time before I could remember where a store was that even sold movies. Now the mall is probably the only place, but in town, you know, there's nothing. Why? Because everyone, <laughs> I, it's considered almost like a birthright to be, you know, stealing these movies. Personally, you know, I'm not going to get into all that, but 
I mostly uh, don't have a problem with that. But there's this new Big Brother law, this, you know, the Hollywood people that are always cracking down on somebody. They always make an example out of someone. They find one poor person who downloaded a stupid Hollywood movie like, dude, where's my car or whatever. And then they sue them and then they make a big splash in the media or the news about it. And then everyone else is like, oh, crap, I better not download any more movies. It will catch me. Well, I don't really like that approach. I think it's horrible. And I sure hope that doesn't happen here with this new Big Brother law. But quite frankly, there's ways to get around it. If you're a person who's interested in downloading things off the internet, I'm going to tell you right away, this internet show, right? I can do what I want. If you're interested in downloading things off the internet, we'll call it <coughs> torrents. Uh, there's software out there that will anonymize who you are and protect you from this kind of crap. Just do a little research, install it on your computer, make sure you're, you know, not downloading some malicious software, but get that going and then you can download whatever you want to. I have things put up on uh, torrents and what are they? They're, uh, you can look on Pirate Bay under Sam uh, C. Roman, I believe it's my name, whatever it is, or S.C. Roman. I had to put it on there because I did a comp, it's on my uh, regular website, thekingofromantic.com, you can look on the right hand side. I wanted to do a sort of documentary that was showing what American TV shows and, and movies, I haven't got to the movies yet, but what American TV shows are saying about Romania. So I use a clip from here, a clip from Seinfeld, a clip from MacGyver, a clip from, I don't remember all the other shows. I clearly identify where the show came from. I did not broadcast the whole episode. In fact, uh, two or three shows together, the clips maybe as up to 15 minutes. And in no way am I making any money off of this. I, I wasn't uh, running any ads on these uh, compilation documentary style clips. They were clearly attributed to the name of the show, the episode, everything. Definitely not trying to claim it as my own work. And it was not the entire episode or even half the episode. It was just two or three minutes, or okay, maybe five minutes total from a, a big episode of a show. And it was just to say, here's the remaining parts, here's interesting, blah, 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 you might enjoy it. Tried uploading it to every video hosting site you can imagine, including one right up the street from me uh, in Romania called Trilo Lido. And they're like, oh, it's a violation of copyright and all this other crap. No, I don't, it isn't. If you take a very small slice of something, I do, do not say that it's your own work. I never said it was my work. Uh, clearly label who created the content, which I did, and you're not trying to make any money off of it, then... That's free, it's called fair use. That's fair use. People did that to my book and put it on Reddit, which is one of the biggest websites in the entire world. They cut little passages out of my book and said, hey, check out this book. Well, I have the copyrights to that book. I am legally the copyright owner, just like whoever owns Seinfeld has the legal rights to Seinfeld. But I'm not gonna sue anybody or make them take it down because it's fair use. It's a tiny, tiny, it's maybe, I don't know, 500 words out of a giant book and they clearly said who wrote it. Well, good, it's giving me publicity. I'm happy about it. Plus, it's kind of cool to read about it. What am I doing? I'm chopping up some uh, TV shows, and oh, well, well. so guess what I had to do? I had to become a pirate. I had to upload torrents and say, go ahead and, and steal it, basically, even though it's not stealing because it's not for sale. I mean, some of these shows, there was a show I put up on there, broadcast in 1990, Charles in Charge. I don't believe it's even for sale at any price, maybe on eBay somewhere. So, whatever. I'm not going to get into that. Point is, if you're downloading things on the internet and you're worried that Big Brother's coming to get you, there are several ways to remain anonymous. You can download torrents anonymously, and you can also browse the internet anonymously. There's software out there. It's designed primarily to help uh, people in, you know, authoritarian countries, which hopefully Romania will not become. And, uh, quite frankly, this whole crap about catching hackers is BS because if you're smart enough to break into the Pentagon server, you're smart enough to throw your ISP off the track. I don't really t understand that. Well, he broke into the server, but he used his real name when he logged in under his own account. I'm like, oh, come on, man. You, you gotta be kidding me. So, what else? Oh, I almost forgot to mention. See, another reason why I do this show is because sometimes the Romanian news... In the Romanian language, I, I don't speak Hungarian, maybe the Hungarians are covering it. 
fails to cover important stuff. Right now in Sinaya, which is a beautiful town, it's north of Bucharest, it's a mountain resort kind of town, I got hiking and skiing and everything. I was there last year and wrote a report about it if you want to check it out. There's a meeting between several members uh, and key representatives of the industry all throughout the EU. They're all meeting in Romania today and tomorrow. Why? They're discussing crop pesticides. What gets legally put on food that's grown for human consumption? Is that important? Does it matter to you that what gets sprayed on the food that you eat or what's permissible or what's you know carcinogenic or whatever else? I think it's kind of important. I actually was shocked to discover that it was not being reported in the Romanian news. I thought maybe I found an old article and, you know, you know, maybe that's why it wasn't ran. I searched every which way. Nobody's mentioned it. They're going to see Naya. There's people from 50, 50, more than 50 representatives from different organizations and countries all throughout the European Union. Oh, whoop de loop de loop de doo And, you know, who's organizing the meeting? It's not Joe, Joe Blow and his friend. It's uh, the European Union Council on who regulate crop pesticides, so it's pretty important. Ah, oh, it makes me so mad when, you know, regular things like that don't happen. But, all right, a couple more things. Looks like uh, MRU, a.k.a. Mihai Razvan Ungoriano, who was briefly the Prime Minister for about three months this year, former Yellow Team member, uh, sort of a friend of the Orange Team here lately, and he got replaced by Ponta, the Red Team guy who's currently in power. And he has officially resigned from the yellow team, which uh, doesn't surprise anyone because he hasn't been really allied with those guys for a while. And he's starting his own party. And we'll see how that goes. I don't know what the name of it is. Maybe he'll be like uh, Diaconesco and say, it's uh, Partido uh, Mike. Well, he put his own name on there, you know, the crazy guy, the purple. I call him the purple team because a lot of their ad campaigns are using the color purple. But they did surprisingly well here in Cluj, speaking of which. I noticed they came in fourth place and they almost beat the Hungarians, which is a little surprising because there's quite a few Hungarians here in Cluj and usually they're pretty solid about voting for their dudes, but Purple Team came in fourth. They're kind of a rising star here in Romania a little bit. It's interesting to watch that. But MRU, or the former Prime Minister, Ungurianu, starting his own party. Now, you know, I don't know what my personal opinion of him is because I'm a little bit coming from a different perspective, but I've talked to several Romanians, and I gotta tell you, he's got a lot of support out there from people. They thought he was a pretty good guy, pretty good prime minister, uh, he's far enough away from the, the orange team monkey business, and he's far enough away from the red team, yellow team monkey business, and a lot of people, they like him. He's kind of a, I mean, when I saw the guy, I said, wow, he looks like a Romanian. He just got that pure Romanian looking face and attitude, and not too crazy, aggressive but not too passive and old and he looks like a sharp guy he is a smart guy that's for sure so it's going to be interesting to see uh exactly what his plans are for his own party and who's going to join because <sighs> it's uh politics are getting a little swampy around here in Clu uh, here in Romania. and looks like we're almost at the half an hour mark i will just leave you with a couple of comments about the race here includes yesterday at the time I did the show. I didn't know who was going to be the official mayor. Looks like Emil Bok, former mayor, former prime minister who quit because he's a punk. I'm going to keep saying that because I got no fear for the guy, of the guy. Looks like he officially is going to be the next mayor. His quote unquote third term in office, the second one he quit halfway through to become the prime minister. So we'll call it two and a half. Orange team, pull up, win, out of the hat. They've been losing a lot of elections, and oh, they're so super happy about it, especially because he's the also the pre president of the Orange team. Well, uh, last night he actually was on a TV show, and I was interesting watching him because I, there's a couple of... Well, his win in Cluj, apparently it's 100% official, but Sunday was really weird because there were four exit polls, uh, done by some very reputable firms who do these kind of things for a living and three out of the four said he lost In fact, there's some footage which I uh, didn't run on the show here today because it wasn't that great of a quality But it was showing his opponent who thought that um, He had won and he's like yeah, who, whatever and then someone said hey, psst, by the way, you didn't win He's like what are you talking about? so he was shocked about it and 
you know, they were showing that uh, the polls done just a month ago, and the gap was like down in the 15, 17% range. So it's like, he theoretically, he came back with this meteoric comeback here in the last month. Now, somebody else told me, and I realized they were correct, is that Bob didn't do almost any campaigning face to face. It was, he would. He filmed a few things where he had, you know, maybe 30 guys around going, yeah, Bob, you're the best, you're the king of the world. But he didn't go out to any of the neighborhoods that I'm aware of. I live in this town. I didn't see anything where he was going to be meeting the public or going around. Uh, he didn't make any appearances, didn't make any big speeches that I saw, you know, public speeches, maybe in a room, but closed room, but not, you know, standing on an outdoor place or whatever. It was like this very weird, controlled insulated campaign. I told you about that debate where he's like, oh, I showed up and the guy wasn't even there. Well, the other guy said, well, you were, you ran away when I showed up. Who knows what happened? I wasn't there, but, so it's like, book, it's like, did he, did he really win? Or did some of his orange team buddies, you know, somehow do, do you know, stuff a few ballots here, ding, 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 mess around with this or that? I don't know. I have zero proof of that and I'm not going to say that I do, but, yeah, he barely won and barely theoretically is the popular winner and the uh, county government um, is run by the red and yellow team. I don't think anything's going to happen of note because the orange team is going down. Nobody really likes him too much. And he barely, what did he get, like 40% out of... 50%. Well, I did the math yesterday. It's only like 20% or one out of five of the people who even can vote vote for this guy. So, I got to be honest with you. I don't know anybody under the age of 25, aka the students, who can stand the guy. All he's got going for him is that he can speak in complete sentences. And he's a very political and polite sort of speaker, which, you know, I give him credit for that. The current mayor, the interim mayor, after the last crooked one got thrown behind bars, the guy, you know, mmm, 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 talk like that, and uh, he speaks Romanian all his whole life. He can barely get a sentence out together, and <laughs> I noticed nobody was, you know, putting him on the ballot to be running for mayor because nobody could stand him. And he's also crooked. He got caught red-handed on videotape driving around a car that he got as a bribe because he signed a contract with the company that cleans the streets here. Includes, so, you know, that's the orange team. People are sick of them. They got no national support, which means Bucharest ain't gonna send us a dime. So the only thing, uh, county government doesn't like them because they're run by the radio. The only thing Bob is gonna be able to do is you know, get some long-winded grammatical sentence, uh, grammatical speeches, and hopefully get some EU money because here in Romania, every politician's like, oh, don't worry, the EU's gonna pay for that. We don't need to worry about that, boy. Hey, man. We all gonna get Mercedes and a pool in the backyard. How's that gonna happen? Oh, EU coming in with that EU money. Woo, yeah. Well, God bless her man. Okay, well, that's it in my show. I've clearly gone a little bit longer than I was intending, as I usually do, but thanks very much for watching. Yeah.